Hello, everyone, and welcome to a brand new show here on WYLN TV called Talking NEPA. I'm your host, Gary Perna. Today, we are talking all about the city of Hazleton and their finances. Today, we're going to talk with the mayor and the city administrator all about the Act 47 that they're in, the financial recovery plan, and how's it going, and where we're at right now here in the quarter of a way through 2019. All that coming up right here on this brand new show, Talking NEPA. Stay with us. It's spring and savings are in the air during the spring sales event at All-American Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Shop our large inventory and drive off with a great deal. Lease a new Jeep Compass Latitude 4x4 for $189 a month. And during Ram Truck Month, get select Ram 1500 4x4s for as low as $32,890. Or get 0% for 72 months on the Ram 1500. Savings are in the air during the spring sales event at All-American Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Go hog wild for Iron Pigs Baseball. WYLN is televising the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs live. America's favorite pastime on your local network, WYLN TV 35. See the stars of tomorrow at Coca-Cola Park. Don't miss any of the games here on WYLN TV 35. Visit WYLNTV.com for a complete Iron Pig schedule. Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs on WYLN, your home for live sports. It begins with a click, and just like that, you are immersed in a world of wonder. Education, entertainment, information. Connect with family and friends from around the block or around the world. So when it's time to connect, Service Electric will be there to make it happen. Now offering speeds up to 150 megabits per second. Service Electric, connecting you to what's important. Watch off the beaten path on WYLN TV 35 and discover the Pennsylvania you never knew existed. And welcome back to Talking NEPA, everyone. I'm Gary Pern. I'm very pleased to have with me Hazleton Mayor Jeff Cassatt and City Administrator Dan Lynch. And today we're going to talk about uh, moving forward here in the city of Hazleton. Now, we know 2018 was a lot of uncertainty when it came to finances in the city. Well, that really has changed moving forward now thanks to the Act 47 process and becoming more financially stable and responsible in the city of Hazleton. So, both thanks so much for joining me. Thank you for inviting me. So first of all, uh, Mayor, I, I want to start with you quickly. Um, coming into 2019, back, uh, let's backtrack to 2018, um, when, when Dan came on board, we were going into Act 47, we had um, a lot of issues plaguing the city with its finances, not, make, not knowing if we we're going to make payroll. A lot of things happened right at the end of 2018. When the new budget came in, you guys put out a budget and said, listen, this, this, is, this is where we're at. This is keeping the city functioning. We're in Act 47. There's only so much we could do. Now that we're in 2019, uh, you know, we're seeing the first two, uh, three months into 2019, how's everything going in the administration side? It, it's it's going to go much smooth, smoother. You know, with the processes we put in place, uh, moving forward should be a lot better than they were in the past. Um, this is a, a re very realistic budget. F well, it's financed. Mm -hmm. It's funded, um, well, you know. As I said before, the, the budgets in the past, there was a lot of false revenue in them. You know, under under expenses, inflated I revenues. This is a very good budget that's put mm -hmm. together, and with with everything else, it should run very smoothly. And, and I know the big thing that and we've talked about so much has been uh, the finances and the kind of really what drove the city at the twenty at the end of twenty eighteen. So Dan, we are in Act forty seven. And we're being constantly watched by the state. We, you guys have a team that comes in weekly, you have meetings. So where do we stand right now uh, looking at the beginning of 2019 and its finances? Well, the city is in ob obviously in a much more stable position than it was at the beginning of 2018. Um, our coordinators of the Pennsylvania Economy League have uh, gotten feedback from the state, and that feedback was positive, mm -hmm. and we've gotten 
positive feedback from our coordinators. The city has made strides to make sure we're following the plan accordingly. Uh, and really, financially, what the plan is striving for is financial stability for the city. So we undertook a couple of, of financial steps at the end of 18, 2018 in order to achieve that. Uh, we did two financing pieces. We did a lease revenue note, which was to help solve the city's running deficit. And after that was finished, coming into 2019, the city took a tax anticipation note, mm -hmm. which would allow the city to function with revenue for the first couple months of the year when you don't normally have the tax revenue coming in. In the past, historically, as the city was getting in trouble, you would take the funding they could scrape together at the beginning of the year, but you're actually paying previous year mm -hmm. debts and previous year bills. So it would kind of e exacerbate the problem of that deficit. So the first piece was able to retire all the city's standing debts and eliminate the running deficit, which is a big, big part of cash stability for the city. And the second piece, the tax anticipation note, allows the city to basically, to put it one way, is to start the city with a, in a year with a clean slate. Okay. So in order to pay the bills and make sure everything's done on time, uh, and then as revenue starts to come in, you do pay that that short-term debt of the tax anticipation note. And and going into this almost with a, a clean slate, looking at it, I know when the budget was proposed, um, there wasn't a whole lot of wiggle room. You guys said, you know, we, we have to live within these means and, and keep mm -hmm. keep track of that. Um, and, and I have heard from you know from some council members saying, you know, we're seeing seeing a, you know being within within our budget. Um, I know we're, we're in the beginning, you know, so again, th this, you know, it, it's all uh, new. It's not like we're in December where we're saying, all right, how much money do we have left to go? Um, but right now, with being on a clean slate, operating the city and saying, listen, if we don't have the cash coming in, there's no cash going out, right? Correct. Uh, if you look at the 27 18, or 2018 reports, the city had slightly more revenue than was budgeted and slightly less expenses. So 2018, in a sense, was a good year, and the city came out ahead. But as we got to the end of 2018, before these things were done, the city was, again, struggling to pay the bills because that deficit existed. And as we prepared the budget for 2019, with following the plan in mind, that was mm -hmm. our, our number one concern was plan compliance, it doesn't call for any j drastic changes in the way the city operates. All service levels remain the same. There's a hiring freeze. So we're looking to make sure that the city's cash flows are good, the city could pay its bills and pay its workers, and is not under the threat of missing those things, and to make sure we're staying so that's you know why those two things mm -hmm. those two things were so I important and the budget process went you know in my opinion went very smoothly mm -hmm. event went, went, went very well and in communicating with council and the mayor um, you know we again followed the plan now one thing that was important to note in the plan is the real estate taxes in the act 47 plan are projections they're not they're not written the way that the EIT increases. They're saying, well, this is what we believe you would need to raise your real estate taxes in order to have a balanced budget. Now, the projection for 2019 was 0.33 mills, and ultimately we were able to ar arrive at a budget that only increased taxes 0.11 mills, which was specifically for debt service. So really, we raised taxes only a third of what the projection of the plan was. So we were able to minimize that, and that was done you know, with the intention of trying to lighten the blow on the taxpayer, because we are aware you know, a lot of people had seen their EIT taxes go up, which is uh, addressing a very specific problem with the city's pension uh, budget. Mm -hmm. So this real estate tax, which is actually kind of part of what's going on operationally, is you know, kept to a minimum, and, and we get to you know, start 2019 with that clean slate. Uh, and you brought up one thing, uh, and then pension. Um, we've seen a lot of municipalities, including Hazelden, who've struggled with the pension. Um, how, how healthy is the pension right now in the city? It's, it's moderately distressed. So it's, it is underfunded, but it, like you had just said, it's, it's not a unique problem. It's mm -hmm. a problem you see in, in organizations all across the state. Um, I want to say this, the city's pension was 52% funded. Uh, and that's part of why some special revenue comes in. Right. The city receives Act 205 revenue on EIT. Uh, but what the city has seen over maybe the past five years is the growth of its, what's called an MMO, minimum municipal obligation. So what the city has to put into its pension fund every year. Mm -hmm. And that's grown to the point where in, in 2018 and 2019, it's, it's roughly about $6 million. Yeah. Uh, so what had happened over the years is the expense of that MMO kind of started to outpace what was actually coming in on those special revenues. So the city had a structural deficit in the pension budget. So even in 2018 with that tax increase, the city did have a deficit in that pension budget. Now that was covered by existing funds 
in that in the uh, pension Act 205 account. But knowing that, you, it has to be addressed for 2019 because those funds are running out. So really, the EIT tax increase as part of the Act 47 plan was addressing that one specific problem and not and not the operations of the city. So if you don't go in Act 47 or you don't have access to that, that means you would then need to account for that 1.3 million and that would mean service cuts mm -hmm. or another sizable real estate tax increase. I'm going to stop right there. We're going to take a short break, but when we come back, uh, we'll continue our conversation about the city's finances and then where we're looking forward moving on. Stay with us here on Talking NEPA. SJ Kowalski is your Mitsubishi Diamond Contractor. They can install a Mitsubishi Electric Mr. Slim ductless heating and cooling system. Mr. Slim systems are designed to make any living space in your home inviting. You can have a different temperature control for every room in your home. The money saving technology can save you 25 to 50 percent on your heating bill. For Mitsubishi, Renai, and trained comfort specialists, call SJ Kowalski at 570-455-2600. WYLN has strong ties to the community and it's committed to important causes like the American Cancer Society and Helping Hand Society telethons. WYLN's commitment to Pennsylvania continues with the broadcast of Hazleton's Fun Fest Parade and the Christmas and St. Patrick's Day parades in Wilkesbury. In the summer, we broadcast the Weatherly and Giants to Spare Hill Climb. And throughout the year, we provide important community services through the broadcast of town meetings, school board meetings, election night coverage, and other community events. WYLN, we're your local network. Life in the Monastery, the new CD by the Sisters of Holy Annunciation Monastery, can be yours for only $18, which includes shipping and tax. Mail a check to Holy Annunciation Monastery, 403 West County Road, Sugarloaf, Pennsylvania, 18249, or call 570-78-1205. This fantastic CD can be yours for only $18. What's on TV? Plenty. WYLN TV 35, the best in local programming. And welcome back to Talking NEP, everyone. I'm Gary Perner. We're continuing our conversation on the city's finances. And um, Dan, I want to talk about the EIT tax. Um, we heard a lot about this during the budget season and how um, you guys had to go before a, a county judge to get permission to raise it. But that that's broken down in a couple different ways to help the city and doesn't mm -hmm. all just go right into the general fund, correct? That's correct. Uh, you do have to do that every year as part of your Act 47 plan, go before the judge. Now, the city receives, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Act 205 EIT, which would go into what the city calls its Act 205 pension mm -hmm. fund. And that is where th those revenues accumulate in order to pay the MMO every year. Uh, so what the plan calls for is a general increase of 0.4% to the EIT that would go to the city for Act 47, uh, and then shifting some of that revenue to the city general fund, but only for the purposes of cash uh, and make sure the cash flow for the city is stable. Uh, a lot of that money would be transferred back to the uh, pension Act 205 fund prior to making that MMO payment that I mentioned before. So I if you're looking on paper at the 2019 budget, it looks like it's a couple million dollars higher than the 2018 budget, but really if you find that transfer in there, you'll find a transfer of almost $3 million back to that Act 205 account. So the city goes before the judge every year uh, in 2018, and I know this was a you know, this made the news and everything. It was delayed for quite some mm -hmm. time uh, because of, uh, I believe, an ethics complaint that was made, as far as I understand it, to be an ethics complaint about a particular judge, and um, and that delayed us tremendously. And I, I know that's going to cause, you know, issues for some people that, you know, their withholding from their employer wasn't probably done the way that we were planning mm -hmm. for. The Act for. If the Act 47 plan was followed and we got the, we did get the approval, but if that approval was in a more timely manner, uh, employers could have adjusted and, and a lot of people wouldn't have had that issue. So we do understand that that's going to be an issue for people and, uh, you know, we, theoretically, you know, we wish that would not have happened, but, you know, we're d trying to deal with it as, as we can. And, and as for the sake of the city's stability, you know, it had to be mm -hmm. retroactive to July 1st. What what steps are we taking now 
um, this year within this new Act 47 uh, program, within this new budget? What steps are we taking to improve our spending and improve our budget for, for this year and moving forward? One of the big, probably the biggest component for the administration in this Act 47 plan is the implementation of a proper purchase order system. Uh, previously, now there was some purchase orders being done by different departments, but it was kind of happening departmentally and then kind of circling back into administration. When what you really want to do is issue purchase order essentially from your administration because it's your purchase order that reflects the city's commitment to spending. So prior to the prior to the Act 47 plan, the city may have made some commitments without the administration or even the mayor being actually aware that the those commitments were going to fiscally materialize. So now it allows the administration to kind of act more like a controller. Mm -hmm. uh, every requisition that comes in uh, is assessed against the budget and then you're approving purchase orders and they go out to make the purchase. If you get into a situation where a requisition then exceeds your budgeted amount, that's where you kind of take a step back, you look at your budget, is this fit the budget? You know, can a transfer be made? Is there somewhere else in the budget where this can be uh, reallocated? If it can't, then maybe you think about if you need to do that or not. If you can transfer from somewhere else in the budget, that can be done as well. And that's where you go before council and everybody's aware of how the budget is going to change. So it kind of keeps lines of communication open. Everybody understands exactly what's going on and is, is focused on being disciplined uh, to make sure that the city does not exceed its budgets and make sure that we you know, follow the budget as we passed it. And, and Mayor, I'm going to go to you with this. Um, you know, with Dan just explained about bringing it all um, under, so it's coming through the administration. Uh, on your point of view, getting this new budget kind of um, process going, making it a little easier to understand what's going on in the day-to-day -day operation. First, the, the expenses for the city have never been out of control. You know, obviously, people like to say we're spending, but if you look back at the budgets that we had the last three years, our spending was very in line with what the budget was. Um, we, we tried to work with council a little bit more closer this year, and they wanted to see transfers made the proper way. So we have been, you know, we saw one last month go forward, and we're going to purchase street equipment instead of police cars. Mm -hmm. um, so we did the transfer in front of them, and that's what they wanted. So it's the same thing that's been going on, but it's this is more more in line. And if I could just add to that, uh, that had been something that had been brought up, and I know that was an issue that brought up in the past, but it's kind of difficult to do those kind of transfers if you're not centralizing your purchase system. Right. Because if you don't know that you're going to need to do that, you're kind of then looking back at it retroactively. So now that we have that in place, it's much more doable for the city to make sure we're addressing these expenses, and if they do exceed budgeted amounts, that's where we go and, and do those transfers. Um, one other thing, we heard a lot about uh, in this last uh, cycle about refinancing and with the debt, and you and you talked about this. But you know, some people have said, you know, you you borrow, uh, and they said, well, then why you know why do we have to raise taxes if you borrowed? Could you explain just a little bit kind of around it and saying, you know, how how the budget works and how you have to be able to to balance everything because you don't have, as you said earlier, you don't have the money right up front mm -hmm. uh, when you start the year off. And by doing this, you're able to keep the city running until the taxes come in. And, and I mean, most taxes, I think, just went out now or are going out. So uh, people need to understand that when you hear something and saying, oh, the city's borrowing money, that's only until you get everything in, correct? Correct. Uh, now, I'll talk about the two different pieces in a little bit more detail. Now, the first one that was done in 2018, that was to address the city's running deficit. Mm -hmm. So if you were to go back and look at, say, a, a balance sheet at the end of 2017, you look at that and say, okay, the city had next to nothing in the bank, about $20,000. They were holding, you know, about 350000 in accounts payable, so holding bills. They were holding uh, tax payables. They were holding a number of payables upwards of an amount of about $600,000. So that really, you're finishing in the hole in a way. Uh, so then when you start over the new year, whether you take a tax anticipation note or in the city's case in 2018, kind of self-fund your own tax anticipation note through that uh, pension fund, what you're doing is paying 20, 2017 bills. So that's how you're kind of falling behind. Mm -hmm. And you ha constantly have this deficit that's kind of following you. So as I mentioned earlier, if you look at the 2018 revenues and expenses, the city came out ahead. But 
come October, you're saying, well, we don't have money in the bank. How are, you know, we could be in a possibility of, of not being able to make payroll. That's how a deficit then kind of rears its ugly head, so to speak. So, you know, theoretically, if you're ahead, you should have that money in the bank, and mm -hmm. then you don't because you paid older bills. So the first thing the city did in terms of those pieces was a, a lease revenue note of a million dollars to alleviate the deficit, and that was wiped clean. In other words, all those, and this is stuff that's been carried for a couple of years, it's just been kind of building following up, along yeah. and building along. So that gets taken care of. The tax increase in the 2019 budget is 0.11 mil specifically to debt service for that loan to specifically address that running deficit. Uh, the, you know, I understand, and the council and the mayor, they, they didn't want to, you know, hit the people too hard with tax increases. The alternative, when we were talking in the early talks of the budget, is to just raise taxes to an extent that you'll eliminate that deficit within the year. So that would have been, you know, maybe a 0.7 mil increase above what's required to run the city, but enough to alleviate the deficit, and then going forward, the city has that money where it can start to build a fund balance. So. They did the lease revenue note, and then the taxes were increased to pay that note. And the note is structured in a way to minimize the impact up front on the taxpayer. So with that done, you still have basically now you're at even. So you have no money in the bank to start paying your bills as they come in for 2019. That's where a tax anticipation note comes in. That's a short-term loan because real estate taxes don't start coming in until a little later in the year. So for the first few months of the year, you, you have very slow revenues, but you're still making payrolls, you're still paying bills. So a tax anticipation note is capital that the city can then use to start doing those things, make payroll, paying bills. And then when the taxes start to come in, that's when you pay that tax revenue note off. So that's a that will be paid off you know, by the middle of the year. Okay, all right, we're gonna stop right there. We're gonna take a break. We'll be right back here on Talking NAPA. It's spring, and savings are in the air during the spring sales event at All-American Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Shop our large inventory and drive off with a great deal. Lease a new Jeep Compass Latitude 4x4 for $189 a month. And during Ram Truck Month, get select Ram 1500 4x4s for as low as $32,890. Or get 0% for 72 months on the Ram 1500. Savings are in the air during the spring sales event at All-American Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Do you like craft beer? Do you want to learn the right way to sample wine? How about visiting a restaurant that has a unique flavor? These are just some of the things we'll be featuring on our show. Wine, hops, and road stops. Jeff Bonomo and his co-host, Alan Gennetti, welcome you into the world of craft beer, great wine, and good food. Wine, hops, and road stops. The Whitetail Preserve Spring Trap Skeet League starts Tuesday, April 16th at 5 p.m. It is open to anyone who is above beginner stage in their skills. You can sign up at Whitetail any weekend leading up to the start date. Remember, the kitchen is open on Tuesdays at 5, so no need to fret over dinner. The cost is $30 to sign up, and this will go towards league maintenance, prizes, and the banquet that will be held June 18th. Remember to follow Whitetail on Facebook, facebook.com slash whitetail preserve. In a world where an instant tweet can create a firestorm of news coverage, WYLN is moving with the times, allowing for more instant reporting of breaking news on television and on social media, as well as regular hourly news updates. News gets out faster than ever before, and WYLN brings it all to you. Live weekdays at 5.30 only on WYLN, where your local network. And welcome back to Talking NEPA, everyone. Um, I, I want to talk a little bit about you know what we're doing moving forward here. And Dan, you had brought up in the break about uh, capital uh, budget being able to go and say, listen, you know, we need to be able to to look down the road and say, if we need to replace something, if something happens, they need to have some type of uh, so something in place. So and not just going and say, well, we got to go and buy it. Let's let's find the money out. How do we get to that point, and, and are we working on that? 
absolutely. You know, so I think I, the word I used was a financial normality. You know, so some of the things that should be, you know, occurring or being done, you know, we're starting to try to implement them. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll have a capital budget this year and we'll present that to council. And I think, you know, the one thing council, the big question for council to consider as we go into this budget season is, do we want to fund that capital budget mm -hmm. with, with uh, you know, dedicated millage, whatever that number may be? Because then we take a look and say, well, we want to plan to have this many, you know, new vehicles or this new fire engine or this repairs that we know are going to be needed to, to our infrastructure. So that's planned out over time and in such a way that you know that you can fund it properly uh, and then you know ahead of time that those things can be addressed. Because when you get into a situation, like you said, where you're not preparing and something comes up, it could throw your whole mm -hmm. operation into disarray because now you have a big uh, expense that you have to take care of, especially if it involves emergency services, uh, and then it could throw the whole budget process out of whack. And it's doubly important in the sense that the city, you know, th although we're stabilizing the finances, it's not like the city is flush with cash. You know, we're still trying to, and we're working toward building a fund balance of which right now the city, you know, doesn't really have a meaningful one. Uh, so over time, you'd like to get to a position where, you know, you have at least 10% of a year's budget in the general fund at all times, and that's a million dollars. So the city's got a way to go to get there. So you don't want some emergency or something coming up that you didn't anticipate to really throw you into disarray. Right. That's why proper planning is so important. Uh, and, and Mayor, you know, the city's been fortunate over the last uh, few years with the police chief and the fire chief and, and the CD department and being able to get grants and 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 stuff through DCD and and stuff for police. Um, but you know, at, at some point they may not always be there. So being able to have some type of emergency backup well, is a good thing. Well, we start last year, January. We come mm -hmm. back from Christmas break and the, f the furnace is down. It was a $100,000 project that, you know, we knew the, the boiler was, was starting to fail, but they came in, they shut it down, and we had a replace, an emergency replacement. It was $100,000 that we had no idea how to fund it. Um, you know, this year we were looking for a roller. Thank God the, we were able to make the transfer from the police we, had, we we leased vehicles in the past. Mm -hmm. We paid them off. There was some money left over, so we'd be able to buy, get our roller so we could do some paving. Um, we were just talking about it today. We have a problem in the parking garage. You know, it's a twenty-five thousand dollar problem. We don't have any money to transfer around. Um, so it, things like that is where you need a capital mm -hmm. budget in place. So when when you have a problem, you can still run smoothly. You can't run a business or a city without having the adequate equipment to be able to. To get the job done, uh, and I know, and, and there's a, a lot going, a lot goes on, goes in this, and, and big kudos to, to Dan and the administration team for for getting everything uh, that we can understand it and see and see what's going on. So, not completely out of the woods yet, but we're starting to be able to to scratch at the surface and say, you know, we're we're able we're able to be in a good position uh, and continue to move forward. So, gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for coming on and talking with us. There's a lot of work still to be done in the city, but work continues each and every day to make uh, to make this a little better for everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you for having us. Thanks guys and remember, you know, go to the council meetings. You live in the city of Hazleton, you you have uh, questions about something, go to attend the meetings, call the mayor's office, stop in and see them and, and ask questions about it. You know, they're working for you. You're the taxpayers and the residents of Hazleton. You get you put them in the office. So Come and question them every once in a while. Thanks for joining us here on Talking NEPA. A lot more great shows coming your way. We'll see you later.